These are the USD Thrones. These are probably the Team Thrones. They have this patch. Some of the throne heads out there can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but they have this patch with the initials uh, JJ, CB, JP, KG, BS, and DL. Huh, Brian Shima left USD. Um, so John, Champion, Josh, Kevin, Brian, and Dustin. That was the dream team. That was like the second round of the USD team. The first round had Arlo on it as well. Uh, and it did not have uh, Dustin or Shima. I don't think Shima was pro when they first started. I don't think it even had Kevin on it. I think it just had John, Champ, uh, Josh, Arlo. Who else was on there? Uh, was that it? No, Dustin. Dustin. Yeah, Dustin was on there. Brian wasn't pro, though, and Kevin wasn't on yet. So those are the two that weren't on there. Anyway, um, so yeah, these are the Team USD Thrones. And talk about history. So um, these things, so this was, like I said, the second generation of thrones. The first thrones, actually, this is probably the third generation. The first thrones were purple, uh, like a bluish purple. And um, that was back when the company was called Upside Down. So it wasn't USD until they got smart and they said, okay, Arlo and all... Uh, John and everyone, we need to fix our image. What are we going to do? And they said, okay, let's come up with a new brand. We'll call it USD. And USD at that time was upside down. Then they turned it into universal skate design. I think that's what it was called. Um, what's crazy about this skate is that this was the first skate that I remember that came with the large fitty fitty frames. I think the... John Julio, I don't know if the, did the John Julio come with large frames? I don't remember. This was right in the beginning of the large frames though. When we first started making frames, uh, do I have a frame out here? Oh, are they all inside? Shoot, I think I left them all inside. Let me see if I have one in the drawer. Oh, no I do not. When we first started making frames, we only had the small frames. Um, and the small frames were the ones that um, the back of it went this way. They were like the iconic one. They fit up to a size 9. Um, I don't remember the wheelbase, but it was probably closer to like 250. This is probably closer to 270. The large frames we didn't make in uh, the U.S. And to be honest, I'll let you in on a secret. We didn't design these frames. So we designed the small frames. But you'll notice at the bottom... God, I wish I had that small frame here. Is in this one? I have too many frames out here. That's the problem. Um, yeah, I don't know where it is. I had some frames. I think I lost them. They might be inside somewhere. Anyway, um, if you look on the inside, you don't see that triple arch system that we are now fairly well known for. This is a weird, like, cheap-looking arch system. They designed this frame for us. So we sent them the small frame. And USD said, hey, we would love to have frames made so that we could cover all of the sizes of skates but you don't have a large frame. And we're like, yeah, we don't have a large frame. We don't have any money. Like we're a really small company. What are we gonna do? Well, the factory made this for us. They designed this frame for us. They used the small frame as the, uh, as the comp and as the guide for designing this frame. And they designed this. That's why the internal arch system looks completely different. It is crazy that that's how China was back then. Um, we paid for it, of course, and um, it wasn't like they gave us a free mold or anything, but um, it was huge. I mean, we wouldn't have been able to do what we did if we didn't get that lucky break. And, and again, I always give thanks to Matthias. I think he was the mastermind behind so much. Um, Matthias and, you know, by pressure, Scott Walker over at Big Dan Importing. Scott saw that the pro model like I was just talking about earlier the pro model skate needed to be a pro model skate it needed to include the things that the pro was known for that the pro actually used and that's the only way for a pro to get really excited about their skate and that's the only way that skate shops are going to say yeah this is John's skate or this is champion skate or this is Shima's skate they had to have a large fitty fitty frame they never skated a large but they needed to have a large right so thanks so much to Matthias. Thanks so much to Scott Walker for getting this off the, off the floor. We also, so with the first round of uh, skates, do I have a tool out here? Uh, let me see. Uh, 
let me get a tool. Uh, see if this one works. So with the first round of skates, with the John Julio ones, they came with the full juice system. And I don't have a pair of juice system base plates here. I actually just gave them to uh, Andrew Kingery, who is going to design some base plates so that he can make them so that if you are an old throne head and you want a one-to-one -one exact replica of uh, the throne juice system, you will have them. I don't know when that's going to happen, but it's going to be a while. Get off. Oh, these have not ever been taken off, I'm sure. Get off. Oh, it's all broken in there. Did I peel it off? Let me see if I can get this off. There we go. All right. Yeah, this, this T-nut went all the way through. So this is what the, uh, the original 5050 frames looked like. So we used a two-bolt system for mounting the uh, frames onto the skates. Um, I don't know what the distance was between these two, but it was centered between the wheels. And it was different on the large than it was on the small frames. So these were the skates that everybody was skating back then. I mean, I, I, I can't count how many pro skaters had this set up. And I mean, this is what made Solomon say, hey, we want to do something with frame standards because this base plate system needs to be improved so that we can have a flat mount, so that we can have an internal shock absorber, and so that more people can make frames because nobody's going to copy this design. I don't think anybody made frames that were compatible with this because this is just this is just a crazy like why would anybody need this design right the reason was that we were trying to adapt it for a raised heel boot you know just like the old trs just like the old no oh, bring down my trs where's my trs oh i have it over here so if you look at these old trs so these are the old trs if you look at this frame and you mount it up to the TRS, you can see exactly why we did it the way that we did it. So the heel of the TRS is taller in the back. And this is the same shell as the cuff disintegrates as I move it. Um, this skate is probably 40, 30 years old. Um, the base plates mounted um, and were at different heights. So the frame had to be at different heights in order to accommodate for that. This is the same shell like mold, boot mold, that the Razor's, um, or Rossi's Majestic 12 uses. So it's a super similar look, right? But that's what we were modeling off of. And the first skates that we made these for were the Rossi's Majestic 12. So the, where did the throne go? I have so many skates on the ground. This is a crazy night. I didn't know that I was gonna do so many things. So this, um, this throne, is a raised heel boot as well. So you can see that the heel is lower than the front. And we made these base plates so that they would fit. So there's two base plates, just like you know, you can imagine popping off that TRS skate, uh, the frame. The way that you used to do that is you would drill out the rivets on the inside, and then we would do these, what we called anti-rivets, which are just screws and little T-nuts, nothing special, but that's what we would call anti-rivets. So you'd put the T-nuts on the inside, and you would screw them in and it would hold these base plates on. And then you could take this frame, you would pop this frame on and screw on the frame bolts and you were out skating. You could swap these out if you wore through them. You could swap these out if you wanted different colors. You could swap these out if you wanted a different setup, skate flat for mini ramp, you know, with grind plates or something, skate any rocker if you're, you know, over at Corona Del Mar or something like that. So, these base plates were the second version. So the original version was designed for the Majestic 12 and they were machined out of UHMW. Those are the ones that I gave to Andrew Kingery so that he could model the base plates off of them so that he could make some. This is the second version. These are molded. So these base plates were injection molded. They were owned, I think they were owned by USD. I don't think we owned this base plate. Maybe we did. I don't think we ever sold these base plates. I think USD sold these base plates, but I don't think we ever did. It's been 25 years, so give me a break with that. I'm trying to remember all these things. All these little details are really hard to remember. 
I'm pretty sure we never owned this mold. I think that was all USD. And they just looked at it as, well, how much are we paying for these base plates for these guys to make them out of UHMW when we really don't need them, right? So they came out with these base plates. They were molded. They worked just as well as our juice system. This material slid really well. It wasn't UHMW, but it still slid really well. And the infamous tumor plate. So this thing is their heel plate. So they never had a sole plate. This is a, this is a very big deal. If you look back at the skates, this USD throne always had this weird like swoopy thing, right? So this swoopy thing in the original thrones was completely flush and the heel was completely flush. Like it just followed the contour of this, this, of this boot. So what we would do is we would take that contour and we would cut out the heel and we would have our, you could see in the bottom here, you, you would have our base plates would come out and they would have a UHMW sole that would come out and it would take over this whole area. So this whole area was a UHMW fin called the juice fin or juice system, I guess. The whole thing was the juice system, but that was like a juice base plate. So that would come out and that would be UHMW and that thing slid amazing. It was a flat sole, which was pretty rare at the time. And it was made out of UHMW. It was at an angle, so it would lock better. Like if you were doing soul tricks and you, you know, you roll over on the soul trick, you'd have less impact or less friction because you'd have less resistance. It would slide you in and lock you in. If you were doing rails, you would kind of get locked in on that rail on your heel. Because, you know, when you're doing soul tricks, we didn't have a ton of tricks back then. But when you're doing soul tricks, you really sit on your heel. You had all of your weight on this heel. It felt amazing to skate that system. But of course, trying to keep the cost down, I think those Julio skates were a crazy price and they took forever to put together. I mean, they were literally hand made. Like we would get these boots in the warehouse and, and um, Scott Walker had guys with, um, with drills and um, they would make these thimbles. Like, you know what a thimble is? Like the thing that you put on your thumb when you're sewing so that you don't prick your thumb with a needle. They would make these thimbles out of duct tape and they would shove like, take this liner out. Ugh. And they would shove, so you can see these anti-rivets in here now. These are little anti-rivets. I mean, they're commonplace now, but back then it was a new thing. They would shove their thumbs in with these big thimbles and they would just drill doo -doo -doo, like that. And they would just go through them. Like, I mean, the duct tape was so that the things didn't spin because we didn't figure out the teeth were needed. Um, and they would just spin around and around and around. It was hilarious. And they would get so angry because it's just a, it was a horrible job. Anywho, um, yeah, so they would do that. Um, they would, uh, you know, drill out the, um, the existing ones. They would put on the new base plates. They realized early on that, hey, this can't happen, especially if they wanted to sell 50-50 frames on skates worldwide. This Julio skate was only available in the U.S. So if they wanted to skate uh, to sell the skates worldwide, they needed a way to distribute them. And we didn't have, you know, our manufacturing at the time was over in China, I think. So we were able to get them the frames, but we couldn't get them the base plates because the base plates were still being made in uh, Huntington Beach, our local local machine shop in Huntington Beach. So they made these base plates. And at the same time, they made the tumor plate. So the tumor plate was interesting. Um, this was the second generation of sole plate. I think the stock one that came with it was that little one that we cut out and nobody liked to skate. The skaters got together and said, you know what we need is a big sole area. So they got this big tumor plate sole area. And I don't know who came up with the idea of the tumor, it's got to be one of the skaters. Um, I, I honestly don't know who came up with it, but that's what they all kept calling it because it kind of looks like a tumor. Like the side is just this, like this weird, like it doesn't fit in with the rest of the skate. It's just this weird, these weird lines, weird texture. It's just, ugh, it's like a tumor. Um, tumor plates were amazing though. So, it was a really good setup for doing soul tricks. It wasn't as good as the juice system, but it was so much cheaper, like exponentially cheaper. 
So this is what most of the uh, USC thrones came with. So the second generation, almost everything came with a tumor plate and you couldn't get um, a 50-50 setup with the juice system after that. I don't think they were around much longer. We might have sold them um, individually, but most people who skated the USC thrones skated 50-50 frames with this setup. They didn't have the tumor plate. Oh, I'm sorry, they didn't have the juice system. Um, anyway, so yeah, this was like the second generation um, of USD, third generation of the, uh, of the throne. Um, I bet there were a couple more generations. There was the UFS throne where they just had a base plate that made it flat. I missed that whole thing. The UFS throne is different than this UFS throne. The UFS throne was a completely different skate. Um, this throne, you know, is a classic. Um, it is, I would say, one of the top five most important skates for aggressive. Um, this is the reason why UFS exists, in my opinion. It is the first time that we prove to everyone that there is an aftermarket frame world and that people want aftermarket frames they want a choice in what frames they uh they ride and they want to be able to go to a skate shop and they want to get different colors they want to get different designs and different styles and again solomon knew that they got into the game and they said hey 50 50 we want to make frames and we're like cool what you know let's design a base plate we actually had a base plate for solomon's and it sucked because our frame was not designed for a flat boot. As soon as UFS came off, it was a game over. So this is what was responsible for UFS. And this is what brought us to where we are today in skating. Um, yeah, I'm really happy to add this to my collection. I can't remember your name, but thank you so much for bringing them out to Woodward. Um, it, was, um, it was a real treat to see them. And I had them on the booth so that everybody could see them and hold them. A lot of people have never skated these skates. And if they did, um, they remember them fondly, you know. Overall, for a skate, I don't think it's a very great skate. Um, I think that we were making the best of what we had. We didn't have much skate technology, but this thing pushed it so far. And we, you know, it was like the Honda Civic of skates, where you could customize it however you wanted. We had different colored base plates, different colored tumors, all the puffy tongue and the lacing and everything. This was it. And um, yeah, thanks. I'm, I'm so happy to have this on my collection. I'm going to be hanging it back on the wall and uh, hopefully finding these small frames. I know they're in there somewhere.